So originally I wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> and then uh, in my freshman year of high school, I started really getting into photography, music, writing. Writing was a big component. And um, film just became an obvious way to merge all of these interests. Uh, I was looking at college and uh, wanting to stud wanted to study film. But I wasn't ready to like totally commit to just going straight up to film school. So I actually applied to Notre Dame, that, and they had a uh, really great undergraduate film program. And in my senior year, um, one of my classes, it was called Professional Video Production, was the name of the class. And I think the idea of the class was like, this is as like close to trade school as we're going to get, and this is so you can all actually go out and get a job like <laughs> in this industry. But what changed that year is the professor who's teaching it decided instead of doing what they normally would do, which are these kind of like video projects, we're going to do documentaries. And so a friend of mine who's also from Oregon, um, who's also in the class with me, um, he had been following this guy or knew of this guy named Matthew Hale who was um, in Illinois. We were in Indiana. He was in Peoria, Illinois. And uh, he was the Pontificus Maximus of the World Church of the Creator, which is basically like one of the leading white supremacy organizations. So he was like in the vernacular of Blues Brothers, quite literally an Illinois Nazi. And he um, was trying to set up the mecca for neo-Nazism uh, in Peoria and bring enough of these people into this town that they could basically take over the government of the town, vote themselves into office, all this stuff. So we're like, wow, this would be a really interesting profile of this guy. So we did that, and I can remember um, I had this little like sob, and it was just my friend Dustin and I, and we were packing up, loading up the back of the car, and I was like, wow, this is like so cool. You could make like a feature film out of the back of your car, you know, quite literally. And then I graduated that year and uh, actually worked in Los Angeles at like a PR firm for 10 months. And at the same time that I was working at this PR firm um, in LA, uh, working on actually a lot of really great documentaries and kind of the learning the ropes and stuff, there was this really amazing story that was unfolding in my hometown, Philomath. One day, one of my coworkers at this firm, I remember came in and like put the LA Times on, at my desk, and it was um, on the, f the front page of the LA Times was my hometown and the story. So this was getting a lot of um, national attention, so I was like, you know what, I should really move back uh, to Philomath and um, see if I can make this documentary. So, and, and literally the morning that I was leaving for uh, Sundance with um, Clear Cut was the day that the Supreme Court ruling upholding Oregon's uh, death of dignity law was announced. And I just knew when I saw that that would be the next film that I would make. In this film, it's been, of course, there's a subject matter, but I think also just the, d the degree of like sincerity or um, intimacy is sometimes uncomfortable for, uncomfortable for people. And I think that's a good thing because I think that's what we need like societally and also in film is that kind of um, uh, sincerity in a film. One of the things that I uh, that I've really uh, love about documentary is just an opportunity to really become a, even uh, more intimately involved and more familiar with the community in which you're living and the people that you uh, would otherwise not encounter in that community. The film goer is like kind of in the subjectivity of the filmmaker in a way. And the film, if the filmmaker is looking at this as an outsider looking in, then that's the position the audience is going to be in as well. And if, and if the filmmaker is an insider and like this, this part of this um, fabric of this community, then I think that the, uh, the film goer, the, the audience can be kind of in that same perspective as well. I hope that that, you know, the fact that I'm a, a, a local filmmaker making story or telling stories that are, that are local is like infused in the films themselves and it's like evident that wow this was this was um, told by someone who is an insider um, and there's a certain intimacy that's conveyed there. The more subtle and invisible um, uh, I was as a filmmaker and the more I let these stories kind of just come straight through the screen and hit people in a very very intimate and personal way the, the better they were going to be the better the films were going to be. You know, I think I will al always make documentaries because there's just aspects of it that I, not only a storytelling aspect, but just like the, the human aspect of the importance of meeting and connecting with real people, you know, um, is really, really important to me. So I think I'll always make documentaries.